It was the working men and women time and time again who stood up for what was right, to help one or another out when we need the help, whether it was at home or away. And the only thing in return that the workers here in Maine and all across the country ask for is a fair shake. They don't want a handout. They just want a fair shake, a level playing field. And that's one of the issues that drove me to Congress in the first place. When I've seen firsthand, whether it was a Republican administration or a Democratic administration, what these unfair trade deals have done to us here in Maine and all across the country. Ever Ever since NAFTA was passed, we have lost over 40% of our manufacturing base here in Maine alone. 40%. That's just astonishing. They just want a fair shake. Currently, with this administration, we're dealing with the Trans-Pacific Trade Partnership Agreement. And once again, we have a battle ahead of us to make sure that that trade deal, however it may can't come out, is fair. We're not asking for anything. We just want a level playing field. Workers in the United States, we can compete with any workers around the world. But one area we cannot compete, that is against countries. And if China continues to manipulate their currency, and other countries manipulate their currency, it's very difficult for workers to compete against countries who manipulate their currency. And I appreciate all the efforts a lot of you here in this room have done and are doing to make sure that, that this administration moves forward with a fair trade deal as it relates to TPP. But here in the Maine legislature also, we're very lucky to have legislators focus on that issue as well. Troy Jackson actually submitted legislation, the Buy America uh, legislation in the Maine legislature. Unfortunately, the governor vetoed the legislation. And looking at other candidates who are running for governor, I am the only candidate that actually would assign the Buy American legislation. And Troy, on a personal note, you do not have a black heart. <laughs> I think if the governor was willing to sit down with you and talk man to man, I think you'd find that you have a heart of gold, that you care about the working men and women, and I appreciate your putting forward legislation in the main legislature uh, to do just that. So thank you very much, Troy. I also want to thank uh, Congresswoman Shelley Pingree for her efforts on trade as well. She's definitely been a stalwart, has been there with me fighting to make sure we have a fair trade deals but also trying to get the administration to deal uh, in other areas as well that affects workers here. And I see Toby here. Uh, also, I'd like to thank Senator King Toby uh, for his effort. One of the battles we've been facing this administration that does not require any action from Congress. The president can do it on his own. That's called the Berry Amendment. Under current law, Berry Amendment requires our soldiers be clothed from head to toe with American-made clothing. They've been doing so until about 2002, when the Department of Defense decided they're going to give an allowance for the athletic footwear versus complying with the Berry Amendment. We have three facilities here in Maine, New Balance facilities. That's 100% Berry compliant. Everything that are made in these sneakers is made in the USA. <laughs> I know Senator King has been very active in that. We were able to get the, the new USTR uh, trade representative up here to visit the New Balance facility, and hopefully we'll be able to get the president to direct the Secretary 
of defense to comply with the full intent of the law and put out a contract for the athletic footwear and hopefully New Balance will be able to get that footwear. The interesting thing is there are also Wolverine makes 100% Barry compliant sneakers and there are 11 other companies, 11 other companies that said if they got the contract for DOD, they would move part of their operations back to the United States to produce those sneakers here. And what's amazing is you hear a lot about the budget and deficits. If the Department of Defense complied with the full intent of the law, it would be cheaper for them to do a contract for Barry compliant sneakers versus giving out allowance. It's a win-win for our workers here in, in, in the, the United States and we'll keep pushing the President to make sure that that happens. And in closing, I'd like to, first of all, um, say, and I know some of you know it because you've been after me for quite some time, uh, particularly the chair of the Democratic Party. Uh, as you know, it was a very difficult decision uh, to decide to run for governor. Even though Congress is dysfunctional, I do love my job, particularly uh, fighting for our veterans uh, all across this great nation of ours who put their lives on the line for us each and every day. So it was a very difficult decision. But ultimately, I made that decision because my love for the people here in the state of Maine is great. And I'm very concerned where our state is heading under the current administration or the potential other candidate who's running for governor. And that love for the state of Maine made me decide to come home to run for governor. Because I believe, while I know that I have the vision the experience and the commitment to put Maine back on the right track. And I ask each and every one of you to help me do that. So once again, thank you very much, brothers and sisters. Have a great Labor Day. Thank you. God bless.